guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part 10 of our ukulele build. Well, when we closed off last week's show, uh, we had everything set up for the most part to cut the curves for our fret wires and our fretboard. Uh, we also had the back of our ukulele glued on and uh, we were getting ready for all that. So what we're going to start off with this week will be flush trim routing the back of the ukulele as well as routing the um, rabbit for the binding and gluing that binding in that we bent quite a few episodes back. And um, you guys don't need to see the full um, video of that. You've already seen it. So uh, let's just get going with uh, routing the ukulele body. So the binding is all glued up, we flush trim the back of the ukulele, routed the rabbit, glued in that binding, and I have to say the second round of binding was much easier than the first, and I'm going to attribute that to the fact that we had it clamped up in that form for so long, and uh, there was very little spring back, it just sat there in place really nicely. So live and learn. Uh, much easier to attach your binding if you let it set up in those forms for a few days. So we're going to leave that for a couple hours and once that's done we'll scrape the excess glue off of it and then uh, let it cure up overnight before we start messing around with it. But for now uh, we can move on over to our fretboard and start working on that. One thing I'd like to point out with this binding that I should have mentioned earlier is when we did the binding on the soundboard or the front of the instrument, we weren't too concerned about the mating edges up at the very top. And that's because it's going to be hidden by the fretboard and the neck of the instrument. However, on the back it will be fully visible. So you want to make sure that you do a good dry fit and uh, once you get everything set up, just trim it with a chisel and, and clean it up ever so slightly to get a really good butt joint on that binding at the back of the instrument because it's going to be 100% visible and you want that nice clean look. You don't want to make it look sloppy at this point in time. Well here we are back now working with the fingerboard or fretboard, whatever you want to call it. And um, what we have going on here is that this is our miter box that we've constructed and you can see that the fretboard fits beautifully inside there. There is no play back and forth and that's going to go a long way to helping us out to hold this flat and still for cutting it. As well we have our uh, makeshift miter box really clamped in there well so that we can really concentrate on just operating the fret wire saw. We've checked and double checked and triple checked the thickness or the depth rather that this will cut with this piece of walnut uh, screwed to it and very important and you want to check this over and over. I actually checked mine and mine was out just a little bit and I had to trim it up. But you want to check to make sure that you are cutting square. In other words, that these two guides that your saw is going to run on is going to cut squarely to your fretboard, which will be sandwiched in here. So just double check there that everything is all right. 
as you move it along, make sure that all your lines that are lined up are square all the way along the fretboard. And once you're happy with all of that, then we can start cutting the kerfs for the fret wires. When making your miter box, there's a couple things that you want to keep in mind. And this guide stop here, you want this to be wide enough that when resting up against this edge, it's not going to rock. So you know you're getting a, a cut that is straight down 90 degrees to your fretboard. But you want to make sure that there's enough height here to support this board, but you also, also want to make sure that this board is, is wide enough that it's not going to be rocking like this as you cut. So we can start cutting and it's as simple as lining up your line, making sure that it's perfectly aligned and once you're sure, go ahead and start cutting your frets. And yes, this is nerve wracking. And there is our first fret kerf cut. And once the edge of that bottoms out, you'll be able to feel it with the saw when you've cut deep enough. And you basically want to go ahead and now and cut each line all the way along. Um, I'm having a little problems with seeing these lines. So I think what I'm going to do is take this saw and I'm going to run one kerf line into my base and what that will do now is it will give me something to align my fretboard with other than trying to see underneath the blade I think that's going to help out quite a bit where I can just line this up now in the center of that kerf line and once I get it lined up with that I know that I'm good to go so go ahead and cut all of your kerfs for your fret wires and for the last few here that we're going to cut just so we have the full support of this miter box we've turned uh, everything around here being the uh, fretboard to give us the extra support. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and cut this, uh, these last few curves for our fret wires. And that would be the last one cut. And this uh, fret wire saw cuts on the pull stroke, which goes a long way to providing some extra control. But as long as you, you know, take your time to make sure that your miter box is set square and that everything is squared up properly, that your fretboard fits nicely in here to hold, there's no shimmying, there's no shifting. This is a fairly easy process and you get some really good professional looking results uh, and it's all done by hand just with a few simple jigs and just taking your time with the whole procedure. So well we're done that part so we're going to go ahead check all the depths of the curves against one of the fret wires all the way along the uh, fretboard and then we're going to go uh, and move on to drilling for the marker dots in the fretboard. Well here we are over at the drill press and uh, <clears throat> we have a 5 30 seconds of an inch drill bit installed. Uh, we're using a brad point so that we can try to avoid some tear out. And we've also uh, set the depth stop to make it so that this drill bit will not 
go through the stock. We do not want a through hole here. We've also set the fence so that the center of the drill bit will be at one inch, which will be the center of our fretboard. And that way, as long as we keep this against the back fence, all of these holes will be uniformly in the center of our fretboard. So we want to go ahead now and drill these uh, marker dots. And like I said earlier, they will be between the fourth, the fifth, between the sixth and the seventh, and between the ninth and the tenth fret. So go ahead and drill these three marker holes and uh, I'll show you what to do after that. Well, the next thing that you want to do now that you've got all of your fret curves cut and as well your marker dots cut is you want to get your neck and you want to line up your fretboard along with the center line top and bottom here on your neck and once you're happy with that alignment and everything's set in place on the back trace the profile of the neck onto your fretboard. Well, you've got it marked out now. It's as simple as taking it over to the scroll saw and cutting it out. Uh, but once again, let's cut just outside the line so that uh, it gives us some room to finish sand down to its final size. And now with a little bit of double-sided tape, we're going to uh, adhere this onto our neck, both top and bottom, making sure those center lines still line up. Center lines are so important in this project, guys. It's what keeps the symmetry of the entire thing. Hopefully you've seen that throughout the build. But we're gonna line up the center lines, a little bit of double-sided tape to hold her in place, and we're gonna flush sand this to the edge of the maple neck to give it its final shape. And of course, once you're done with that, you should have something that looks like this. And this here would be the overhang that I spoke of that's going to hide that gap uh, in the binding. But we're pretty happy with the results here as we're moving right along on our uh, instrument. And now it's time to deal with these marker dots. Just one little thing I will caution you on, guys, is... Uh, you've really weakened this fretboard by putting these kerf cuts in it. So go easy on the double-sided tape. Don't run it all the way along the neck. Just a little square at the headstock and a little square down here near the 12th fret will do you just fine. If you put too much double-sided tape on, you gotta remember its job is to stick and uh, you're running a real high risk of breaking this fretboard. There you go, public service announcement for the day. Now it's time to work on our fret markers and the holes were already drilled in an earlier stage, but what we need to do now is fill them. And what we're gonna do is mix up a small amount of five minute epoxy mixed with some black permanent ink. Now whether, you know, indie ink, whatever you wanna call it, it's the kind you use in uh, one of the, the pens with the nibs and that sort of thing. So we're gonna dye a little bit of that black with the India ink, mix it well, and very, very carefully fill the holes uh, that we drilled in our fretboard. Now you want to overfill them just a touch because that will shrink uh, when it dries, but don't go crazy and overfill it. You wanna be careful not to get any on the fretboard. So just be real careful filling those hole recesses. Well, we've got our fretboard here and we just want to start mixing up a little bit of epoxy and you really don't need much. 
it's only enough to fill those three little holes so don't go crazy on your mixture here there's no sense in wasting it so we're just going to mix it up there's a two-part five minute epoxy and uh, so equal parts of <clears throat> each and then we're going to mix this together <clears throat> excuse me once we get it mixed we're going to add a little bit of the ink to it to dye it black and this ink do not splash it on yourself it will make a mess so I'm going to finish mixing this up and then we're going to add the ink to it Once you get that thoroughly mixed, you just want to get a little bit <clears throat> on the end of a small dowel. I'm even going to use a smaller dowel here. I think that one might be a little overkill. So just scoop up some on the end of a small dowel, just like this. And we're just going to let it drop into the hole. Being very careful not to get any out over the edges if you do get a little bit over the edges you may be able to sand it off later but for now try not to and as I said you want to overfill these holes because it will shrink a bit as it dries. <clears throat> just going to add just a little more. Actually, I don't think I am. That seems to be it. another little drop in each one and now comes the hard part you have to let that sit and not touch it but I will zoom in on it and show you what it is that we've got here now and there it is you can see that each hole is filled and it's just slightly beaded up and that's fine because once it dries we are going to shave that off with a sharp chisel and then sand it with some micro abrasives to uh, polish it up a little bit but for now it's a waiting game on this uh, fretboard so let's put it aside and move on to something else well there's not much that we can do right now um, with the neck or the fretboard while we're waiting for that epoxy but what we can do is we're going to go over and take all of that painter's tape off of the binding for the back and we can scrape off the excess uh, squeeze out on that and start trimming up that uh, binding to be flushed with the body of the ukulele. Well, the binding is scraped flush front and back and now we're going to go ahead and give the whole body a really good sanding um, with 220 grit but don't go crazy up top here because don't forget you've already shaped your neck to fit to this profile so you don't really want to change the top very much but as far as the rest of it goes give it a really thorough sanding okay and at that point in time now I've given it a nice uh, <clears throat> clean up with some tack cloth and just check this out. 
If you've come this far and you have something that looks like this, if you aren't proud of yourself at this point in time, you never will be because you've achieved something absolutely amazing right here. Check that out. That is absolutely beautiful. And uh, now that we have the body sanded and uh, it's pretty much as complete as the body is going to be with the exception of the bridge, now we're going to attach the neck. Well, we have our body and our neck here and uh, you can see our screws are protruding out. We're ready to go. What we need to do at this point is mix up some epoxy. And uh, I've got some acetone and the acetone will be used to clean up any squeeze out uh, of the epoxy once we get it onto the body. I can't really film this because it's time sensitive and I will be trying to work quickly. I can't be messing around with a camera, but the process will be spread the adhesive here, which is the epoxy, onto the neck, line it up with my screws, and as best I can, get in there, tighten the whole thing down. Um, I'll be using a screwdriver bit and a ratcheting wrench through the sound hole of the ukulele to pull it all together. I'm going to clean up the squeeze out with acetone very quickly and then we're going to flip it over. If you remember earlier, we made this board where we did a center line and did the outline and traced out the neck and we're just going to make sure that everything lines up, that all of our center lines are perfectly aligned before the epoxy sets up. And as well, the very important part to check is that when this neck is on here, get a straight edge from here along to the top of the neck and make sure that you've got a nice flat level surface from end to end. That's just imperative. Make sure you have that. So wish me luck guys and I will see you after this epoxy is all put into place. And with that we're pretty much at a standstill until this epoxy dries. Um, I was going to use 5 minute, instead I went with a 30 minute to give me some more time and, and space to work with and uh, I think that was a good call on my part but for now we're going to have to wait and uh, let this set up. So I'm just going to put this aside, I'm not going to mess with it and um, there's really not much more that we can do on the build for this week so I'm going to call it a show. And uh, guys, next week we're running into the home stretch and uh, hopefully you're going to join me for that. And I'll see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.